Hey everyone, Maury Curtis Dunbar here with Painted Studio. Welcome back. As you can see, I'm wearing bats on my head. Some of my friends have said I had bats in my belfry. Now I'm just wearing them out in front where everybody can see them. Because, yeah, we're in spooky season, so I just had to. Um, today we are finishing up our uh, Vera Glamise panels. I'm just currently opening up my iPad, turning the volume down so I don't hear myself in an echo. And then uh, let's get this done here so I can see myself and see what we're doing. Okay, there we go. Now I'm live. I can see myself. Hey, Miss Ashley. Our lovely bride-to-be is joining us. Okay, so we're going to start working with this panel. You've seen me do gold and layers on it. This so far is how it looks from the front, which is pretty cool. But now we're going to finish up the background of this, and I'm going to show you how we're going to get there. First of all, we're going to use colored mica flakes. Now, sometimes you can buy your mica flakes colored. Sometimes you have to color them yourself, as you can see. My bag is slightly green. And all I used on these is alcohol ink. Um, so that's really kind of a fun way to go for it. I just need a brush. Hang on just a second. Ah, uh, here we go. I knew I was gonna forget something. All right, so I'm gonna angle this down so you can see where I'm working right now. Get the whole panel in there. Um, and what I'm going to be using first, now I have done layers of Palette Deco Fofex Palette Deco Clear that I've tinted, I've mixed some threads into it, I've done wavy patterns, and what I did here is I really just created a watery texture. Um, and I shed my hair on it. So the next thing I need to do, I'm going to finish this background and then, and then tomorrow I'm going to seal it. So the first thing I want to use is some golden self-leveling uh, clear gel. Why? Because everything else I've used has texture. I don't want texture right now. I just want this to level. This is not the same as two-part epoxy, but it does have some really lovely leveling qualities and it dries super clear. Not hard. It's not a top coat. just brushing this over the entire surface. Everything in here is either water-based or has been sealed with shellac so that I'm not going to have any issues with um, incompatibility of materials because yes there is one-shot sign paint on here. There's all kinds of, you know, I do a lot of stuff so I have to know how to isolate them from each other so that I don't ruin things. All right, let me just come back this way. Make sure I'm a little more evenly spread. Now, the reason I use this instead of something like, oh, say Set Coat Clear, again, Set Coat Clear um, is gonna dry less evenly. It's got a slightly frosty finish to it because it doesn't dry uh, shiny. So, you know, I knew that would be an issue. And also, I didn't want a top coat because the top coats are gonna set up too fast. With this self-leveling clear gel, I have work time. All right, so we're just gonna cover the entire back of this with the uh, big mica flakes that I dyed green. And I know, once again, everybody's like, what is with the green? Well, the green is, is part of the project. Um, that is the one thing I had very little freedom on. I can choose what shades of green, but other than that, it had to be green. So what I'm doing now, since this whole idea was rocks and a river, I'm sort of working to create the idea of the riverbed with the mica flakes. And I've built up enough layers of depth and color with the golds. I think this is going to look really kind of cool. And, you know, not all of my mica flakes are going to be perfectly colored. 
and I'm good with that too because nature um, likes lots of variety in its color palette. You know, if you go out into the forest, you're not seeing a single shade of green. You're seeing a lot of shades of green. And I'm applying these in their different thicknesses. Some of them are going to be small. Some of them are going to be large. Some of them are going to be thick. Some are going to be fat. So that's what's going on. All right, let's get some of this stuff in here. And I will have it going over the edge. I will trim it down with a blade later once everything has cured hard. Um, I just want to give everything full dry time. And if I didn't color enough flakes today, um, I'll make more. But I think I should be pretty good because I really worked to get a lot of flakes in there. In my, my dye mess. And just take your time to place everything where you want it. No need to rush. You've got some work time, as you can see. As long as this hasn't cleared and turned hard, this will act like a very nice, shiny, adhesive layer for me. And any of the spots I missed, I have some other mica that I dyed too. Smaller flakes, different colors, but green. Different shade of green, yes, but they're still green. I love doing this. I think it's so cool. Hi, Diane. Thanks for popping in. And Maria and Desiree, nice to see you all here. Okay, let's keep peeling my mica sheets apart. They were already pretty fluffy, but, you know, I stuck them in the, in the baggie with the alcohol ink and shook them, so the moisture wanted to help these things stick together as opposed to fluff up apart. So I have to take a few minutes to peel the mica off of each other because these were all different separated pieces. This is not just one big organic clump of mica. It's a clump because of the uh, alcohol ink I put in the baggie to, to color it. Come on, I know I'm getting your part. This is so pretty. I don't think it, I know the camera doesn't do this justice, but this is really gonna be so, so, so pretty when it's done. Okay, I've got some more in the bag. 
hopefully have enough to finish this up. Okay, I gotta peel all of these apart, because again, not a natural organic clump. This is the clump that happened because I poured the alcohol ink on it. Um, and if you've never seen mica formed naturally, uh, I'm, I'm lucky, you know, I grew up, my grandfather had a huge boulder with mica in it in his backyard. And my sister and I used to sit on it and it looked like a big granite boulder, but um, sticking out of it were chunks of mica. And I don't mean chunks like this size, I mean chunks like this big. And my sister and I used to sit on the rock and just peel it, not knowing what we were playing with. We, if I had known what that was then, yeah, I'd be slapping my own head. Okay, let's get some more. Might not have quite enough, so I'm gonna be able to show you how I color mica. I can see that I clearly do not have enough to finish this job. Okay, so uh, let me go grab it because I actually put it away thinking I had enough. So this is mica. This is natural mica, untouched, unlightened. It comes, micas naturally come in everything from clear to brownish. So this is what natural mica looks like. And it comes in and you can peel these pieces apart because it's naturally a form, a forming sheets of silicone, or silica, not silicone. And so I'm gonna tear these little bits and pieces apart. Got a couple that I know fell down here because I saw it. And I'm just gonna pull this apart, make some more, put them in the baggie and squirt some alcohol ink on it. Now, ideally, I'd squirt the alcohol ink on here and they would have a couple hours to dry, like the first batch. This one's second one might be a little damp. We might get a little color bleed into the uh, gel medium and I'm okay with that. Okay, so here's my baggie. And grab all my mica flakes, put them in there. And I know this is this is so complicated. I know you all, all you smart folks, aren't going to be able to make, handle this. Okay, baggy, alcohol ink, and this is Alco Rangers alcohol ink. I don't know what the heck color it is. It just came in the package. Doesn't even say. I don't think what color it is. So I'm going to take this green and I'm going to drop a bunch of it, squirt a little bit, a bunch of drops or one little squirt into the baggie, and then I'm gonna shake it up. And then I'm gonna move all the mica pieces around. So they get coated. And then I take a little look in the bag decide whether or not I need more, and then I go back for more if it's needed. And usually it is.
Now this is, I, I promise, this is actually easier to do with smaller mica flakes than with the big ones. But when I do it like this with the big ones, it's like having stained glass on the back of this. And I really kind of love that part of it. All right, so let's, let me get finished up here. Go. See, like I said, it's not hard to do it. It's just messy. on here. Hopefully this is enough. If it's not, well, you get to see me make more flakes. My door is open, so you can probably hear the cars honking, but it's such a nice day out. I couldn't bear to leave the door closed. Okay, there's that. Oh, yeah, we're almost there. all done and then let me get the extra other glitter or I'm sorry other mica and this one I just put in a combination of this green and a little bit of uh, blue just so I could get it uh, a slightly different green and I take this and I pat it down wherever it looks like there's open sticky stuff And then this is gonna dry overnight so that then tomorrow I can do a final seal coat on it and it'll be ready for pickup on Saturday with the rest of this project. leave empty spots. All right, that one is now done. You can see it, it is a massive mica. I'm not even gonna tip this because whatever's loose will fall off tomorrow, but I need to give whatever is actually sticking on the back here a chance to stick. And by falling off, I mean these little flakes, the big ones will be fine. All right, give me just a second, let me move it. Uh, do mica flakes come in other colors? Um, Yes, mica, in general, you can buy mica in a lot of colors, but I custom colored mine for this project specifically. All right, let me take this and move this. Okay, 
Okay, we're going to work on this one now. Now this one doesn't seem to have a whole lot on it. I'll move a few things out of the way because this is going to get an epoxy coating on it. Let's see, what am I missing? I am missing cups and gloves and everything else I need for epoxy. I'm a genius, be like me. Okay, so what we're going to be doing here, this is going to be epoxy, and we're going to be playing with alcohol ink on the epoxy for sure. But the first thing I have to do, of course, is to mix it up. So I guess I need gloves. That would be good. If I can find them, because everything keeps getting moved here when I turn my head. Got it, got it, got it. There we go. Need a spreader card. Oh, every time I think I'm organized, I realize I'm not. Alrighty. Take a sip of water. So the first thing I have to do clearly is mix my epoxy. Um, it'll bond, pour on the glass and be just fine. Uh, you don't have to scuff it because this is not going to be a high use item. You're not going to be using it um, on the side that I pour the epoxy on. This is decorative. So that is something you deal with a little differently. Okay, let me get my gloves on. So I'm going to use my art resin. I don't have to make insane amounts of this because I'm only pouring it right now on two different pieces. I just need to make sure I have enough in here to pour on both. And I'm using art resin. It is low VOC. I think it's actually it might be zero VOC, um, non-toxic, and food safe when it cures. Now, you may have heard rumors, sorry, this one doesn't want to come off and it, that, this one's always the pain for me. Um, you may have heard people saying don't use epoxy on things that are for food. It's toxic, toxic, toxic. Well, that isn't true, okay? Some epoxies are not designed for food. If you are get, buying a, a, an epoxy that says it's food safe, it has to pass FDA testing standards to be a food safe epoxy. So if, if, if it's food safe, it's food safe. If it's not food safe, it is food safe. Now that doesn't mean you might not be allergic to it. Um, I've met plenty of people Good look at this. I have met plenty of people who have allergies to resin and therefore they claim that it's toxic. I'm like, no, your immune system doesn't like it. it, it that does not mean it's toxic. That means your immune system, it means you're personally allergic to it. Not always an easy one to get others to understand, but it is what it is. All right. Need a little more in there. And I just need my stir sticks now. Okay, so you need to have these equal measure. You saw I went back and put a couple drops in one. Um, if it's not equal, if you have too much hardener, not enough resin, 
your resin will start to set up too soon, possibly even before you pour it. It will be brittle. It will not have laminated hard enough and it may just pull right off the surface. If you don't have enough of resin in there, you have quite the opposite problem. It might never actually harden correctly. You might have soft spots, you might have sticky spots. Um, again, doesn't cure properly, so it's definitely not food safe. And that, so now we're gonna go stir. And I don't worry too much about bubbles, that's what my blowtorch is for. But when you're stirring, you wanna scrape the sides, you wanna scrape the bottom, you wanna scrape everything, because you do not wanna scrape this when you're pouring or brushing or however you're applying your epoxy when you haven't stirred it all the way, because then you'll have soft spots or brittle spots. Um, so this turns cloudy when you start mixing it and when it's ready to go, it is completely clear again. It's already starting to clear nice. Hey, Sherry McDonald. Nice to see you here. And Maria and Change is Made. Thank you for popping in. So this one I'm going to try to kind of keep sort of a watercolory feel to it. Okay, I'm almost ready to go. All right. Let's get the last of this stirred. Ooh, having a hot flash. The epoxy's getting warm and so am I. Now, if you want to have bubble-free epoxy for pouring and etc., when you mix it up like this, if you have a little coffee warmer, now I'm not sure how strong this plastic kind of cup is on a coffee warmer, but if you have a coffee warmer, you warm the epoxy and it raises the bubbles to the surface. You know, one of those little cup things that people keep on their desk. Actually, I bought one for myself for my coffee and I'll have to try it again this with this stuff this winter. All right, so I'm gonna pour on here. Now clearly I'm being generous. That was my intention. I'm gonna take, this is an old, old, old insurance card. Might even be my mother's insurance card. Now it's my son's <laughs> old insurance card from when his dad was still covering his insurance years ago. Now my son's an adult and he pays for his own insurance. God bless him. Okay, so I'm just moving my epoxy across the surface here. Getting all of it covered. And this is gonna make a drippy, nasty mess so I'm gonna to have to be really cautious when I start moving some of these things around. Okay, so epoxy levels to an eighth of an inch thick. It does it automatically unless you're pouring it into a mold. If you're pouring it into a mold, you can get it far deeper. But be aware that when I pour like this, I might pour it and it's a half an inch thick, but it's gonna thin out and run down the sides. You know, I'm fine with that for this. I planned for that. That was really my goal. All right, so now I have, where's my alcohol ink? Now, uh, alcohol inks just love spreading around inside epoxy. They swirl, they whirl, they do all kinds of lovely, lovely things. So I'm putting the rest of my alcohol inks over here. Let's take a little yellow. We'll use a little bit of the blues. Alright, let's 
take a little bit of the pearl and drop it into things. Now, these things, like the pearls, they're a little heavier. They have to be shaken up really well. And they can do some very interesting stuff in the uh, colors. So I'm just dropping a few drops here and there. Come on. Oh, like I said, these are interesting. They like to clog too because they have that extra little bit of pigment stuff in there. So don't be surprised if that's what happened. But you can see that sort of I'm getting this interesting kind of sissing stuff happening. love it when this stuff does it makes me nuts this is one of my frustrations with metallic alcohol inks is that they like to do this thing of getting clogged up in the nozzles very frustrating okay let's put some more ink in here Now, I need to let this sink, sit for a little bit because um, the alcohol needs to evaporate. You leave the alcohol ink alone so it does its magic a little bit. Um, I'm not even worrying about bubbles. I'm, I'm enjoying the bubbles in there, but it'll, I may torch it eventually. So we're just, we're just gonna do a bunch of colors, blop it on here and then let it sit for a minute and then I'm gonna come back after I'm done, do some swirling on it. Actually, let's see what happens. I'm gonna put a little silver in here. We're gonna play with all kinds of stuff in here just to see what it does. So this is silver. Darn metallic ones make me nuts. Okay, there's that. Uh, maybe I'll go back in with a little of this dark, dark tealy blue green. All right, so that's gonna sit for a little while. Maybe I'll just put a drop there. having too much fun playing just watching the way the alcohol inks play with each other and then disperse into the epoxy all right I've I've screwed around with this enough I need to set this aside for about an hour and then I'm gonna come back in and I'm gonna go with a, a bamboo skewer and swirl it because then it will have thickened just enough to hold that kind of stuff so I got to move this ever so carefully out of the way number two now this one I had done my gold pattern on the front I have played with some plasters I've put in some mica powders and now I'm just going to build a background for it a final backing to seal everything up and give it a little more color richness so here let's see I think I'm going to just actually flat out color this epoxy here. Use it to color it. There we go. 
And whatever I have left in here, I'll pour into a mold and make something out of it. I don't know what. Okay, see, I've got now that nice, rich blue-green. Very to be good and green. And I will probably have to put a fabric backing on these because they're not supposed to be transparent. But I'll decide that tomorrow after everything's cured. Because, yeah, this has at least 12 hours before I can turn it over and see what it looks like. Keep this moving around. Now, I know you're probably wondering why I choose what I choose to create these things. And quite frankly, sometimes I don't know. Sometimes I just do it because I like what I got the idea for. Things come into my head and that's how I figure it out. I know that's very silly sounding, but sometimes that is my creative process. Like I've got a, I've got something in my head and I've got to find ways to work it out. Sometimes I do all these layers and think, damn, I, I could have done that with a lot less. Most of the time though, the layers are all necessary to get the depth. Okay. Everything's on. Now this one I will hit with the torch. I've got my acetylene torch right here. And because I'm on glass, it's really, really important that I do not dawdle and torch into this. I could actually break my glass if I'm not careful. So I'm just popping bubbles. Let me go move that to the side and then I'll come back and look and see what your questions are and then we're going to be done for the day. Sorry, that took a moment because I also needed to go get a mold to use for the rest of the epoxy. This happens to be a zombie pen holder that I picked up because my friend Camilla gave it, gave a zombie pen holder to my son for Christmas last year. And then I came across the mold and said, that's it, I gotta make my own. They are too fun. All right, so we're gonna play with some other metallics and stuff in here. I'm just gonna put a couple drops of silver and pearl. There's the silver. Good grief. I hate when these get stubborn like this. It makes me nuts. So Now normally you pour alcohol ink into clear epoxy and watch it kind of do its stained glass thing, but I needed that epoxy color to go on the back of that. So obviously we're putting alcohol inks into the epoxy after it's poured and during the pouring. 
All right, I'm gonna take a couple drops of this in here. I have no idea what this is gonna look like. I'm just playing with some of the tutorials that uh, I saw online. I'm gonna see if they do me any good. All right, we're gonna let that dry for a little while, set up for about an hour. Again, I'll come back and swirl it. Tomorrow I'll uncast it on Facebook and we'll see what's going on. Meanwhile, I'm going to take these gloves off so I can touch my camera, flip this up, take a good look and see if I've missed any questions. Oh, thank you, Sherry. I appreciate the kind words. Okay. Uh, La India, Brenda, Dawn, thank you all for popping in. Let me see if I missed anybody. Diana, thank you all. Thank you all for coming in. I appreciate that. You know, we, we do a lot of goofy things here. I won't know how any of this comes out until tomorrow that I've just poured the epoxy on. I can't turn the other ones over because everything, um, everything just has to cure or dry or make itself ready for whatever I have to do next. All right, everybody, have a wonderful day. We'll talk to you soon. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.